Good morning, welcome to First Presbyterian Church and welcome to the season of Advent. I'm so delighted to have you coming and joining us for worship today. My name is Pastor Kay and for our Advent season today, we're gonna start with a special service of lessons and carols this morning. Our second Sunday in Advent will feature not only bringing in our new pastor, Pastor Scott, but we will also have a special program by our children that morning, and then we will gather at the Lord's table. It's so appropriate that Pastor Scott will join us around the table as we come together for worship that Sunday. As we finish out the Advent season, we want to make sure that you know that our Christmas Eve service will be at four o'clock on Christmas Eve, and then we'll have our regular worship Sunday morning on Christmas Day when we will celebrate the Lord's birthday in a very special and less formal way. So we are delighted to have you here this morning joining us for worship worship when we can just praise the Lord and give God all the glory. So let us gather now as we wor to worship the Lord our God. Good morning. So that's our new trailer for the folks online at home to welcome them to our service that you have just seen. And I want to welcome all of you for, to the first Sunday in Advent here at First Presbyterian Church. It's good to see everyone. Today is a little different kind of a service with lots of singing, lots of music, and we're excited about the service. Um, a few announcements. I assume that they've been running up on the screens. Blessing in the Backpacks needs help on Tuesday morning and Tuesday evening if you can come and help. This is the last time that you have to order poinsettias, get them in. Um, the last two Sundays of Advent and for Christmas Eve. Um, next Sunday will be our children's program. The kids are going to present a Christmas pageant during the worship service. Um, it's a wonderful addition to our, our Advent celebration, and so we're all looking forward to it. Any of the kids know, they all, the families already know, they, they have practice Wednesday night and Saturday, and it's important for them to be here for those practices. We want to welcome Nemeas back because he's off his crutches and joining us. And this is his last Sunday before he goes back to Brazil. So welcome back again. And we are so delighted to see you doing well and doing so much better and walking around. All right. Are there other important announcements that I need to make this morning? All right, last week for shoes. Get them in. All right. I think we missed Connor's birthday last week. He turned four on Friday. So happy birthday to Connor. We have other birthdays this week. Eunice DeVore. Is Eunice here? It's Eunice. Yay, there's Eunice. All right. Dola Bowles has a birthday. Priscilla Lindstrom. Oh, Dola's here. Yay. Woo. All right, Priscilla Lindstrom, is she here? Yay! Oh, this is three of them. Oh, my goodness. Sharon Rutter Zingler, is Sharon here? And Peg Chambers. Is Peg here? Yay! All right, four in one week. I think that's the most we've had in any one week. Can we sing happy birthday? We got to sing one. We got four of them. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. Happy birthday to you. All right, let me see. Yep, I got four of them up here. Make sure you stop by at the end of the service or during the, the uh, meet and greet and get your candy bar. Let us worship God.
we do not we do not prepare with busy need, needs but prepare our hearts with expectation advent is a time of waiting not in idle kind of waiting but in an active waiting that fills us with longing with the Christ child Today we begin Advent and light our first candle. This candle reminds us that, like the wise men and shepherds, we seek out the light of Christ, see the star rising in the east, and find hope in God. Hear these words from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made. That has been made. In him with was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
it is always lovely to come into the house of the Lord and greet friends, neighbors, family members, and to know that we are loved by the Lord our God and we, we can share that love with each other. I invite you to continue your, your conversations after the service, meeting and greeting each other as we join for coffee and refreshments following the worship service. As we've come into the Lord's house, let us come before the Lord, confessing our sins as we pray together. Amazing God of glory, we see your star in the east, opening the gates leading to your manger. We gather in your house, waiting expectantly for the Christ child. His voice cries in the wilderness, calling us to repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Yet we are slow to admit to our need for repentance. We deny any wrongdoing in our lives and continue along the same pathway as we have always done. Forgive us for our stubborn clinging to the old. Help us to see our shortcomings and where we have strayed from loving others as you have loved us. Forgive our short tempers and lack of compassion for others and let the light of your love guide us back into your arms of love again. Amen. All things in heaven and on earth are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Forgiveness is ours through faith in the Lord, in whom God was pleased to dwell. So friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Therefore, let us forgive one another. Please stand as we sing glory to the one who forgives all of our sins. Please be seated. It is with great joy that we celebrate again Nemeus's leg being healed and continuing to improve. We remember in prayer this week the family of Carl Bland who passed away on Tuesday and whose funeral was yesterday. We need to keep Janet and Cindy and all of their family in our prayers. We need to remember those who are at home and unable to be with us or in nursing homes or in other places where they're just unable to get to worship this morning. We pray for them. We pray for all the students and families and folks who are traveling, whether they're returning home from Thanksgiving vacations and family gatherings or they're traveling home, home at the end of semesters. We want to keep all of our students in our prayers for the next couple weeks as they finish their classwork, take finals, and return home. Are there others that we need to be in prayer for? Yes. OK, at Hawthorne, there's an entire wing that has COVID. So we need to keep them our, in our prayers. And there seems to be a pretty good resurgence of COVID everywhere. So um, just be weary, um, be careful, and please stay safe. We will pray for all those with COVID. Others? Continued prayers for Kevin Vest, who is just... Needs lots and lots of prayers. Kathy's nephew. The others? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. 
Gracious, loving Lord, it's so good to be able to celebrate Thanksgiving with family and friends, and we praise you and thank you for the celebrations that we've had in the past week, the get-togethers with family, the, the wonderful time of rest and change of pace to our, to our lives. We praise you and thank you for that, Lord. We praise you and thank you that Nemeus is back with us this morning and doing so well, that your healing hands are at work and restoring the strength to his leg and healing the bones, and that he is doing well and will soon travel home. Gracious Lord, we pray for all the families in our congregation and for their extended families, that you would be with them as they travel, both home from family gatherings, as well as those who are away at college or who are here and have to travel home from college, that you would be with them. Take care of them, Lord, as, and give them wisdom as they finish their projects and their, take their finals. Be with them. Keep them safe as they travel. Be with them, Lord, and help them to have a good time as they reun reunite with families. Lord, we say a special prayer for those in our community with COVID, especially for those who are in nursing homes and exposed unintentionally by, by neighbors and friends. Lord, be with all those who suffer with sickness, whether it's COVID or flu, those who have breathing problems, just be with them, Lord, and let your healing hands touch their lives. Forgive their sins and restore them to health, Lord, that they might celebrate your love and life with you. Lord, we pray for all those who also have pains in their back, pains in their knees, their ankles, feet, hands, arms, shoulders, all, all of us who are just getting a little bit older and so everything hurts a little bit more. Lord, we pray for your healing hands for that you would just take care of all those aches and pains and make them go away, that you would be, give us patience with our own bodies, patience and strength to keep on going. Comfort us in the knowledge that you are with us and always caring for us. Lord, we pray especially this week for the Bland family, that you would be with all of them as they gather together, together and support each other in the loss of Carl. Be with them, Lord, and bless them, and draw them close to your heart, that they might know your love in their lives. Be with all those in our congregation who, during this time, find a need to, to just have a little extra support. Lord, we pray for all those who have lost loved ones in the past, and who remember those loved ones dearly and sweetly during these times of holidays of the holidays. Be with them, Lord. Comfort them in their moments of grief, grief and give them strength to remember and continue forward and remember that you are always with us. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings of decorations and fun during the Advent season, this time to celebrate. We thank you for all those who came and decorated our sanctuary in anticipation of your son coming among us. And we thank you for this very special season of Advent when we can celebrate together your son, son and his birth in a, mar in a manger. Gracious Lord, you are always with us. But during this time, we pray that you would draw us ever closer to know your love, to know you, to know the hope for future, to, to be ready, as, to be, prepare as we look towards the star that is guiding us to uh, us as we wait for the coming of your Christ child. Be with us, Lord. Guide our prayers, guide our time of anticipation as we prepare for the coming of Christmas and your Christ child. Gracious Lord, then hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 17. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a lender shoot from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will transplant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will transplant it, and it will produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now I'd like to invite all the children of God that would like to join me for our children's time to come on down. Well, I'm glad to see everybody. So what's today besides being Sunday? It is. It's the very first day of Advent. You're right. And this is kind of a crazy thing because usually it's in about a month for a regular calendar. But in the church calendar, the first day of Advent today is the new year in the church. So happy new year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, January's not tomorrow. That's, that's the regular calendar. That's the Roman calendar. This is the church calendar. It's a little confusing. Well, the first Indian Advent is also the beginning of Advent, and that's the time that we're waiting and preparing for what? What is it, Elizabeth? That's right, the birth of Jesus. And we've got a lot of different traditions, and we've got a lot of different symbols, and we're going to learn about a lot of them after we get done with children's time. But I want to talk to you about a tradition that has been a tradition in many churches, and it was a tradition in this church many years ago, and we're going to try and, and start it again this year, and that is called the Chrismon tree. The Chrismon tree began as a symbol of praise and thanksgiving. Mrs. Harry W. Spencer, I don't know what her first name is, maybe just Mrs. Harry, I don't know. She was the original of the Chris, the originator of the Christmas tree in the Lutheran Church of the Ascension in Danville, Virginia in 1957. Christmas is a con combination of the words Christ, the first letter C H R I S, and monogram, the first three letters M O N O G R A M. A chrismon is a monogram of Christ, a symbol of Jesus, and some chrismon symbols are copies of designs made by early Christians. All chrismon are made out of white and gold. White is the liturgical color for Christmas and refers to Jesus' purity and perfection, the gold to his majesty and glory. They are hung usually on an evergreen tree, our Christmas tree, the symbol of eternal life which Jesus has one for us. Chrismon are in, divided into three categories, Nativity Chrismon, Passion Chrismon, and Victory Chrismon. Today, I would like to talk to you about three Nativity Chrismon, the Lamp, the Star of David, and the Sand Dollar. Here is the Lamp. The lamp symbolizes the wisdom found in the Bible and the knowledge it reveals to us about God. From Psalm 119, verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. So that's the lamp symbol. Now this one is the Star of David. Now before King David chose the Star of David as the symbol for the Israelites, it was known as the Creator Star. It reminds us not only that Jesus is Jewish and belongs to the house of David, but that we are all connected. Okay, the last one I'd like to share with you today is the sand dollar. I was kind of surprised at this one. It On the sand dollar, you can see there's kind of five points. It kind of looks like a star there in the middle. That star has come to represent the star of Bethlehem. 
Well, now that you know a little bit about Chrismon, I invite you to come up and you can take a couple of the Chrismon ornaments and you can hang it on our Chrismon tree. So if you'd like to come up now and pick one or two and just hang them up, they've got little strings on them that you can hang them up. And then I've got coloring pages for you to take home with you that have Chrismon on them. So just hang them right on the, right on the cross pieces. Oops, careful. Don't let it bite you. There we go. Good job. Yes, you may put two on. Oh. oh, well then, you know what, if you want to just leave one down, I can take care of it. Here, why don't you put it over here? Yeah, right over here. Let's, let's put it on the end. There you go. Thank you. I appreciate your help, Jacob. That looks great. Did you get it on there? <laughs> okay. And Elizabeth, if you would hand these to everybody, and I'll take the extra back. We can put those in the in the bag. So, thank you so much for joining me and help me helping me to decorate our Christmas tree. As the Lord has blessed us in many ways with wonderful blessings, blessings and ways to remember Christ, now let us offer to the Lord our tithes and our offerings. Please stand as we sing praise to God. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, as you have blessed us, so now we offer back to you these our tithes and offerings, that through them you might be blessed and that, your, that they may be multiplied by your loving touch and meet the needs of all those in your community, bringing your kingdom into our world. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You know, one of the fun things about, about um, Advent is all of the wonderful symbols that we have around us. I want to say something about the mural over here. You're going to want to watch it every week through Advent. Margie did a wonderful job painting a mural for us. And this week is the week of the star. And we mentioned the star in our, in, as we lit the Advent candle this morning. The star is just a wonderful symbol. And so many of us put a star on our top of our Christmas tree to light the way back to Christ. We put balls on our Christmas tree to remind us that God is all around us. There is no beginning or end. We put the manger on the banner back behind us to remind us we are celebrating and preparing for the coming of the Christ child. Our wonderful Christmas tree reminds us of the symbols of Christ, of Christ coming and, and and they are everyday symbols that can draw us closer to God. This morning, we're going to have lessons and, candle and carols around symbols that represent the names of God out of the Old Testament. This is an antiphon service, service and each antiphon represents an Old Testament name and a name of God is a gateway to the Lord because when we call on the name of the Lord, the presence of God is opened to us and the presence of God comes and dwells among us. 
And so we will look at seven different names of the Lord God this morning in our service. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. We have a response. The one who is to come. Dear friends in Christ, in the stillness of this sanctuary, we gather to mark the beginning of Advent, a season of waiting upon the Lord, who came once in the flesh as Savior and Redeemer of the world, who comes daily in word, sacrament, and ordinary moments of human encounter, who will come again in glorious majesty to establish God's kingdom of justice and peace. We will hear from prophets foretelling the first coming of Emmanuel and poets proclaiming God is with us. Let us remember prophecies fulfilled in the distant past and strive to proclaim Christ's transforming presence in our own generation. Let us also pray for a renewed vision of God's righteousness, that our ministries with the poor and the oppressed, the sick and the suffering, prisoners and refugees, the forgotten and outcasts may proclaim and enact the coming of God's kingdom among us. May God give us ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts to receive the message of Christ. Join me in this prayer. 
O wisdom, your word spoken in the beginning of creation generated a world of beauty and goodness. Come and instruct us in the way of prudence that we may care for your world with justice and compassion through the one whom we know as the wisdom of the ages, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Adonai, ruler of the house of Israel, you appeared in the burning bush to Moses and gave him the law on Sinai. Come with outstretched arm to save us. Come, Lord Jesus. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter is Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephron and the war horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the weakness pit. Return your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double, for you have bent Judah as my bow. I have made Ephraim its arrow. I will arouse your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and wield you like a warrior's sword. Then the Lord will appear over them, and his arrow will go forth like lightning. The Lord God will sound the trumpet and march forth in the whirlwinds of the south. On, the, on that day, the Lord their God will save them, for they are like the flock of his people, for like the jewels of a crown, they shall shine on his land.
Let us pray. O Adonai, ruler of the house of Israel, you rescued remnants of your people from slavery and exile. Come and with great light deliver us from all that binds us to sin and alienates us from you. Through the one whom we know as the mighty Savior of all, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O root of Jesse, rising as a sign for all the peoples, before you earthly rulers will keep silent and nations give you honor. Come quickly to deliver us. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Scripture reading from Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge for the poor and decide with equity for the oppressed of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the ball around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion will feed together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Let's join in the hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, verse 2.
may be seated. Please join me in prayer. O Root of Jesse, you reach deep into our hearts, drawing forth our longing for justice. Come and plant within us a passion for your kingdom through the one whom we know as the root of all righteousness, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The key, of the key of David, O key of David, scepter over the house of Israel, you open and no one can close. You close and no one can open. Come to set the prisoners free. Come, Lord Jesus. Scripture reading from Revelation 3, 7b and 8 to and 11 through 13. These are the words of the Holy One, the True One, the, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one will open. I know your works. Look, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I am coming soon. Hold fast to what you have, so that no one may seize your crown. If you conquer, I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God. You will never go out of it. I will write on you the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from my God out of heaven, and my own new name. Let anyone who has an ear hear to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Join me in the congregational response of Psalm 24, 7 through 10. Come, lift your voices high, be lifted to glory. The Lord our God approaches. Come, shout the story. Lift up the gates, eternal. Lift up your voices. The King of glory comes. The nation who is this glorious one for whom we are waiting? We wait the mighty Lord, our God, celebrating. Lift up the gates, eternal. Lift up your voices. The King of glory comes. The nation rejoices. Come, lift your heads with joy. Come, lift up your tower. The King of glory comes in full might and power. Lift up the gates, eternal. Lift up your voices. The King of glory comes. The nation rejoices. Who is this King of glory for whom we are singing? Our God, the Lord of hosts, the victory is bringing. Lift up the gates eternal. Lift up your voices. The King of glory comes. The nation rejoices. Please join me in prayer. O key of David, you open and no one closes. You close and no one opens. Come and liberate us from captivity to our past, that we may face your future's bright promise with bold and per boldness and purpose. Through the one whom we know as the Son of David, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O radiant dawn, splendor of eternal light, sun of justice, come shine on those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death. Join me. Come, Lord Jesus. Scripture reading from Isaiah chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, 
in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will cry out or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Please join me in prayer. O rising dawn, you chase away the shadows of the night. Come and enlighten our darkness with visions of reconciliation, that we who are alienated one from another may seek fullness of life together through the one whom we know as the light of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O ruler of nations, monarch for whom the people long, you are the cornerstone uniting all humanity. Come, save us all whom you formed out of clay. Come, Lord Jesus. The scripture reading, Revelation 19, six, verses 6 through 8 and 11 through 16. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of mighty thunder peals, crying out, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exalt and give him the glory, 
for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. Then I saw heaven opened, and there was a white horse. Its rider is called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems. He has a name inscribed that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The armies of heaven, wearing fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name inscribed, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let us pray. O King of the nations, you defend the cause of the poor and raise up the oppressed of the earth. Come and build us into a world community where all are valued and the vulnerable protected through the one whom we know as the chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us respond responsibly. Responsively. By affirming what we believe. Let us affirm our hope in Christ, who came, who comes, and who is to come. When violence reigns and war seems never ending, Christ is our hope. Born among us, crucified and risen. When despair lies in wait and life loses meaning, Christ is our hope. Born among us, crucified and risen. When people claim to know what God alone knows and say the end is near, Christ is our hope. Born among us, crucified and risen. When life on earth is extinguished this year, next year, or a hundred million years from now, Christ is our hope. Born among us, crucified and risen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand as we sing together, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. You're going to sing three verses, but there's actually seven verses, so there you'll fo need to follow the screens.
There are lights in the sky and a star over Bethlehem. The star leads the way to the gate and out into the openness of opportunity. Follow the star, go forth looking for the light of God's love. And know the light which is coming is the light that shines in the darkness and cannot be overcome. As you go looking for the light, may the grace, mercy, peace, and love of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, go with you this day and forevermore. Amen. There'll be joy in the morning on that day. There'll be joy in the morning on that day. For the daylight will dawn when the darkness is gone. There'll be joy in the morning Christmas day. Go in peace. Thank you for joining us in worship today. We are just so delighted that you have been with us in worship as you were gathered in your homes. Um, you know, pastors can't read minds. And so I want to remind you that if you need prayer or if you need support by the congregation or a pastor, please call the church office or call the pastor directly we, or leave a message, but remember, Facebook, Facebook messages, everybody sees, sees. But we want to support you, we want to pray with you, but we don't know that you need that unless you let us know. So don't hesitate to call the church office and let us know that you need the pastor to come by and visit with you. One way that you can support the church in return is to remember to send in your pledge or your offering. And remember that we also all need to be praying for each other. So let us all pray together for each other this week. Have a blessed week and spend your time praising God as you draw closer to the Lord our God. Blessings. Have a great week. Bye. <laughs>